Boom. There you go, Dan. Well, hello there, everybody. How are you doing out there? <laughs> immediately glitched out. Welcome to the third episode. Of the- <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Dan, you've been Welcome to the glitch in the matrix. Is it still glitched? It's, no, no, you're <laughs> this is the first introduction word. This Welcome. I like, froze for a second. Welcome to the fine. show that I don't even know the name of, and I'm a part of it. <laughs> the, uh, the founding lore fathers, FLF, FLF, as I like to call us. FLF. Um, Episode three. Have, uh, so we're the fluffers. Is that what you're saying? Now? Fluffers. <laughs> the fluffers. <laughs> I'm not a fluffer, bro. <laughs> you're, those, you're those fucking love fluffer guys. I'm looking for flamingos. I, I preferred it when we were the drunken assholes. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'll never forget that. We, yeah, Dan. Dan had the uh, Dan. Dan made the decision for us. He's like, I did. A, I had a study, a focus group, and everyone said founding lore fathers is how we need to do this, and it's it's. The name of our podcast on Spotify, and I'll be honest with you, dude, I'm not going through that hassle. We'll start something new or editing it. So, if one of you would like to step up, it's and annoying. That, I'm open to another name. Um, <sighs> all I can right, give it well, a shot boys, sometimes. So I want to I want to have a little update on uh, what we talked about last week. Um, so I was speaking with my sister out on the West Coast, and oh, Dan died. He's dead. He's back. Oh, he's not dead. He's back. Welcome back from the dead, Dan. Um, I was talking to my sister Sorry. about uh, about you guys telling me about shadow people and all this other stuff. And she told me that in our house in Maryland, she had a run-in with a shadow person. And her story is as she was leaving our backyard through the fence, she turned around real quick and there was a shadow person. It was almost like a black mist was right there in front of her. Now, this is directly in line with Mm -hmm. the tree. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but I mentioned it a couple episodes ago where my grandmother was staring at it. She's like, there's something wrong with that tree. So that in that line, so apparently the house I lived in in Maryland was haunted and I was spared the poltergeist. You were younger, weren't you? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. I I was under 10. Um, yeah, I think I want to say 10 when we moved. But yeah, I was a kid when that happened. So I uh, don't remember any of that stuff. But I did want to talk to you guys about the Gator Man. Now, I was uh, I was inspired by John's comments Ooh. last week about Doja Cat and uh, her hilariously weird descent into demonic symbolism. Like this lady, she's legitimately like everything scared God-loving parents in the late 90s and early 2000s were scared of when they went on that crusade against the music industry where they attacked... The satanic panic. Yeah, they saw... Atheists are praying to God. I'm so sorry, what was that? Atheists are praying to God. Right. Uh, they're watching her video and atheists are converting to Christianity. <laughs> atheists are converting... Oh, gosh. Look in the comments. It's insane. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen yeah, it yet. Man. Y'all... I've, like what? Did, what is so, it, what is going on with it? I haven't seen the full video, but I did spend. Uh, I did leave my my music comfort zone, and I spent about 25, 30 minutes on YouTube watching the Doja Cat conspiracy. So, the idea is, on her twenty seventh birthday, she was initiated into the Illuminati, and that plays on the whole like twenty like the twenty seven conspiracy. You know. Like, I, we mentioned pre-show where like Kirk Cobain died when he was 27, a bunch of famous um, Amy Whitehouse, people like that. Now, yeah, Morrison, but they're good artists. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine, right? What, you know, good is relative, but we you know, one commonality of all, between all those people is they were making money. And so is this woman. Now she's doing her best to stop that from happening. Um, but now this chick, uh, so the internet conspiracy is, on her 27th birthday, she was initiated into the Illuminati and became uh, a succubus or like sold her soul to the devil. I'm not entirely too sure how that works, but she's like, she's making, she's making like music videos where she's dancing with the devil. Like she has horns and shit, dude. Uh, she got a, 
like that skeleton tattoo on her back and there's this weird like pig man thing tattoo she got tattooed i mean like on her arm it's really it's really fun to see that stuff and the way people have reacted has been truly amazing so I have a separate theory on that. Like, yes, she's using the whole demonic symbolism um, in the videos and stuff like that. But I think that it's a Halloween video and she just pulled from a bunch of stuff like because she's not creative. So she just was like, all right, well, I'm going to dress up like Insidious. I'm going to get Christina Ritchie in the video. I'm going to pretend it's Casper and Poltergeist. And then I'm going to act like Jack typing on the typewriter in The Shining. If you break it all down, none of the ideas in the video are original. Well, Christina Ritchie, let's just think that she's a succubus. <laughs> right? That part. That's, that's the possibility, <laughs> that <part>. right? <laughs> she's a succubus, so that means that she's gonna put she's gonna put out, right? What's her number? I'm assuming her number is probably six six six. I can I can fix her. I can fix her. I got this. I had a. I had. I had a girl, got I had the a devil pick for her. Uh, her phone number was uh, something 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 eight the devil. So it was eight six six six. Um, that chick. That chick was nuts. I saw her uh, headbutt a windshield well, like a, a windshield on a car because like her ex boyfriend showed up one time. And she just went smashed it. That was an amazing moment in my life. Um, yeah, on a side you know, note. My boss's number used to be uh, two six 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 or Four, something like that. Oh. Four six six yeah. six. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah. And he was absolutely just Satan to work for. <laughs> you know, uh, it's kind of jog your memory there. Um, our, our buddy Sherman. Uh, I remember when we first met. He he. Sherm. You want a three six mafia man? I'm like, this is the devil. <laughs> That's all those whole group, man. I was funny thing. I got I got I got to call that man up. I hadn't talked to him in years. I saw a uh, I saw a Sherman doppelganger while I was in Texas. Like I, I went up and said, "Hey, Sherman wasn't Sherman." Swear to God, looks just like him though. Um, so Sherman, if you listen to this, I miss you, buddy. So that would be uh, our good guest. You know what I'm saying? Get the whole band back together. Yeah, might as well, right? <laughs> Get him on. Somebody reach out talk to him, right? Right. Dance, dance, lost again. All right. It, it, I'm, I see y'all, but it says recording error. Exit out. Oh, okay. No, that works. No, Dan's gone. Let's let's make some ground up here, all right? Um, but the twenty seven club, uh, yeah, dude. Like, see, the thing is, is though, like, you're supposed to be famous by the time you get to twenty seven, so that way you can, they can off you with the with the death clause that's in their contract. You know what the death clause is, don't you? I'm I'm not familiar with with all of that. I you know. So the death clause in their contract is. Okay, well, I'm going to give you an example, um, and it's one of my favorite musicians. Prince was not married when he died. He had no children. All of his music has went back to the record in the recording studio that he fought his entire life to get away from, and they made so much money off his music after he died. Because artists to them are worth more money dead than they are alive. It is truly fascinating to me that Prince died without having any kids. I don't know how that man managed to do that. Like he had that, he had to have been out there just slinging it. There had to have been something left behind. So, oh, yeah. Look, there is a saying that freaking Prince can steal your girlfriend and steal her clothes. And then steal somebody else's girlfriend wearing your girlfriend's clothes. <laughs> Prince could probably steal a few boyfriends too. <laughs> like that dude was notorious. <clears throat> Saw him in the Super Bowl, right? With a giant with this giant penis guitar. That was that was a fun sight. Um 
Yeah, so the uh, but part of the other theory, yeah, I'm not we're jumping around a bit. Part of the other theory is that uh, Saturn moves around uh, every 27 years; it comes back to the same position, and so that's when the yeah, that's when the Illuminati wants you. It's when there's Saturn realigns, and that's that to me was just that's where I decided to stop listening to the Doja Cat conspiracy nuts on the internet. Because I did not need to know that about Saturn, and I, I just, I, there was no way I was doing extra research to see if they were just making that up. I don't want to know that much about Saturn. Right, I know a little something about Saturn. So Saturn supposedly emits radio frequencies, and on the top of Saturn is a hexagon-shaped um, storm on its north pole, right? Really? And yeah. But the funny thing is, is whenever they were doing sound wave tests, they were, they were projecting sound waves into water. Different sounds make different patterns in water. And whenever you um, take Hebrew words and concentrate it into water, it makes a hexagon shape. That's nuts, dude. Yeah. yeah I know, right? So yeah, I'm, I will go down that rabbit hole. That yeah, I mean, there's all kind. Of, they think that like, um, yeah, that that like the Earth. They think that Saturn is like the radio control for Earth. Is something that I read one time. <laughs> like <laughs> it's the remote control for Earth. <laughs> just, just what is it trying to? Is it trying to balance out our our spin or whatever our access? Access? Well, I mean, it's something's got to because otherwise, at some point, the moon and the Earth will become tidally locked, just like every other planet in the solar system. So there's got to be something to it. Yeah. Um, I know that Jupiter helps with the Van Allen radiation belt. and it, uh, Not the Van Allen. No, no, no. The uh, Van the, Allen. We're going to mispronounce yeah, it. Pronounce it right. Meteor place the meteor place <laughs> john blanks here i'm sorry <laughs> box job he got a box job there <laughs> fine, <man. laughs> good enough his first language is english right. ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> what are those the meteors like the the, the belt of them i've got most uh, of them the meteor the milky belt. way <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Which galaxy are we in? <laughs> uh oh, so we got dead airspace here. Um, so I got a neat little fact that I learned. Um, so are y'all familiar with how Los Angeles got their water to where they could become a big city like they are? Uh, you know, no? the only thing I know about California water is that at some like like very awful meeting like five people bought all the water rights maholland um it's other dude but um so they had the la river originally but it wouldn't have been enough to to where they could have had larger than like ninety thousand people so they stole this water from this like lake 160 miles away they just ran it through canals all the way to los angeles and it's completely dried that lake out now it's out in the middle of the desert and they happened to say the other day, they were like, yeah, this big giant former lake looks exactly like the surface of the moon. And I was just like, surface of the moon, you say, near California. Okay. And when I was looking at they showed a satellite view of it, and it really looks like the stage for the moon landing. Oh, dude, we made it uh, to the moon. <laughs> we made it to the moon. Sure, they might have shot some people. I want to believe that we made it to the moon, too, man. I feel you know like, what I'm uh, what's his name? Buzz Aldrin. You know, that dude, see, he doesn't seem Buzz like a guy. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's a Buzz Lightyear. He punched the shit like out of that guy. dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. One, of the, one of my favorite videos out there of uh, somebody getting punched in the face. It's it's, it's definitely top 10 for me. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It's a great punch. Just the guy just harassed. I just couldn't imagine her. her you didn't go to the moon. American no, you era. didn't. <laughs> You're just a phony, a phony baloney, mister. <laughs> John Glenn doesn't seem like the type of guy that would lie either. You know what I mean? Like, that dude did some shit, and he's fucking proud of it. Uh, 
Um, I mean, from what you hear, like, they almost died on that mission. And, like, if, oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and, of course, all of science in general, like, even the Big Bang Theory, they're like, give us one miracle, we can explain everything else. So it's no different than anything else that science has pulled off. Just need that one spark, right? Yeah. There's so there's some really there's some really good information that's out there. Um but before before we get into Gator Man, uh I did look up and we'll, we'll do another we'll do an episode on these on these people before too long, but the 18 like the mid 1800s, I'm talking about the uh, spiritual movement and why there's ghosts and stuff from last last week. That there was a lot of stuff going on back then. And that time frame saw like four or five religion splinter. Like that's where we get the Jehovah's Witnesses from that time frame. That's where we get like the first recorded person speaking in tongues. So the Pentecostal people that came from that area, era right then and there. The my favorite part about it though is the Fox sisters. And these were people who claimed to be seances and they would like they made a they made a lot of money touring, like pretending to be able to talk to ghosts and shit. And then at like on her deathbed, this woman's like, no, nah, we made it all up. <laughs> it was all bullshit. <laughs> like the girls was, that took pictures of the fairies, right? Yeah, uh, sure. Why not? <laughs> it's any, any any way you can make a buck, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these uh but yeah, I watched, I don't know, I probably watched four or five videos on those the, on those sisters before I finally got to someone who said, like, oh, by the way, she also, you know, this sister said that they were liars. But everyone else is like, no, they're great. They were spiritual movement. Like apparently these people, like they inspired uh, the first woman who ever ran for president to run for president. They uh they were friends with a guy who wrote like the last of the Mohegans and shit. Like these these were highly influential buyers and they just just toured the country telling like knocking on wood and shit <laughs> that's like charles get, manson I love to get on that charles manson like i was watching about him today he had so many different connections to everyone in hollywood and then like like there's so many different people involved with that whole massacre that happened uh, behind the scenes and uh I mean, he was so close to breaking it into fame, and he just couldn't do it. And then he got mad and dosed a bunch of people with LSD and told them all about Helter Skelter. I feel like that Charles Manson is probably like a deep dive that we should do because, yeah. um, I mean, he got caught stealing cars over a hundred times, and they just kept giving him more probation. He had a life sentence of probation before he had a life sentence in prison. Well, there he was, played Lucifer in a movie. Like this guy made this short film, and I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, he was in that. Now, the justice system was taking a very different approach to things back then. So you say we're you, giving him the LSD? That's well, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> they didn't yeah, just that's the point. Organically. <laughs> His whole thing was right. He would take less of it. And give more of it to the other people, and then so he was coherent enough to tell them what to do. <laughs> Someone's got to stay like the ground level, you know. Yeah, I say, yeah. we can't just go flying away. <laughs> well, the whole point of of the, that whole MK Ultra was try to con, try to figure out mind control, and it worked. He took less, he gave them more, told them what to do, and they did it. He that's, did it. He, he proved. That's what I was trying to remember. Okay, so at one point in time, um, L. Ron Hubbard and Charles Manson were living in the same house. And uh, and from there, like, he went this way with Dianetics, uh, you know, whatever my finger, whichever way my fingers are going to point. And then Charles Manson went the other way with the Helter Skelter. Yeah, like, oh, we definitely should do a deep dive into that. There's a lot into that that I didn't know. It sounds fantastic. Now, we should we should probably probably treat that like a research project and delegate out different aspects of his life. Like you know, John takes the first twenty years, whereas you know, Charles Manson. Mm -mm. <laughs> I want to write about how he <laughs> stole a whole fleet of cars and turned them into dune buggies. That's yeah, something they left that him happened. in the desert. That's something that happened. <laughs> 
at the ranch, <laughs> they found like it's getting better every every time you say a sentence, man. <laughs> I mean, the the comedy of Charles Manson is almost equally as like the comedy of Ted Bundy. Oh man, Ted you Bundy's great. <laughs> what a monster that he was, was the goat, man. He went yeah, to the absolutely. beach and told people his real name and murdered them. And then the, the cops he were just like, oh, he wouldn't tell people his real name. Well, I'll be yeah, damned. Yeah. He told them his real name. Yeah, he, they, they would give a fake it's name. Not, you know, uh, Ted. <laughs> I'm Red, Red Bundy. <laughs> yes, that's he Red told him his real name and he drove his actual Red car Bundy? there. No, so, yeah. so he's, from what I understand, he stole the exact replica of his car. So like he had to get rid of his uh like yellow punch buggy or whatever it was. Well he while well, he was down in Florida, he's like, Oh great, there's a there's a buggy right here. So he just picked right up with someone else's car. He also stole like a church oh, yeah. van or I something. Mean... Oh, that, that, yeah, that's that's the least worrisome of his crimes. <laughs> so I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But yeah, you know, what what I what I wouldn't what I think would be funny though is like if that was the crime that sent him to hell. <laughs> he repented for everything but stealing the church van. <laughs> All those people just <laughs> the crime that sent him to hell was he figured out the ultimate pickup line with women. Hey, I think my car broke down. Can you help me fix it? Yeah, he's he flipped it around. Like the normal thing is the girl has the car broken down. And he took that and flipped it around, I guess, against the whole world and feminism and everything and used it. Like he he's just top notch, hands down. The ghost. Such a such a terrible person. <laughs> I know, right? Because he was also a sexual sadist, you know what I'm yeah, saying? And a murderer. Just he carved his name into the, the casual. He right. carved his name in the courthouse bench. He he got married in the middle of his court while defending himself. The most insane way ever. I got a mute. Yeah, those- yeah, we got it. Yeah, I got it. All right. So, what do you want to talk about? Baby shark. Do, 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 do. Man. Ugh. Right. Working sucks. <clears throat> so. Dead air. You'd say something. Um, I didn't prepare anything for this week. I gotta yeah. be honest. Like, I mean, I got some thing. I got some things, you know. I got some things, but like, I, I gotta to wait for him to veg get out. Back. Yeah, but that was the whole thing. Is like, I need a week to just veg out and just like recuperate. We a- We've had all kinds of weeks to just recuperate. We all recuperated. There's no more recuperation. That's left. a good point. Yeah, no. Back to work on Monday. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. We had, we had a we had a blanket emergency. That's okay. That we happened. filled the time with perfect. Absolutely. See you didn't, later. Didn't let you down. So I am. <laughs> I am. I don't want to get recuperated by Ted Bundy at all. <laughs> so I will avoid the conversation you just had. The. Uh, Te- the Marilyn Manson, Marilyn Manson thing, uh, Charles Manson thing. Have you guys seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? By any chance? Yes. Is it no. is it worth watching? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll go ahead and rent yeah. that bad boy sometime. This um, then. There's going to be like two or three times that you think you're going to know what's about to happen. And they're going to. He's going to Tarantino you. He's going to Tarantino but, me. Yes, absolutely. It's kind of like how it's kind of like how he did <laughs> in um with the whole Nazi situation in um oh, what's the, what was the name of that yeah um how like he just instead of like letting that whole thing play out they just killed him right then and there in the theater and and blew him away it's kind of like that you know what I'm saying like they're gonna throw a twist in there. I'll watch that. There was a there was a guy who played him in a, one some crime show I watched. The guy did a wonderful job. Like he's like sat down to interview the guy, and Manson's like he walks in and he's like 
doing all this stuff was weird. And then he stands up like on top of a chair table and starts talking like he's preaching these people. So the the actor did a lot of research into Manson. So I I, I really am. We'll we'll have to we'll have to talk offline about when we're going to do that and how we're going to do it. Because that sounds right. like it'd be a good two, maybe a two parter. I mean, I kind of get where he's coming from too, because like he was hanging out with all these famous people, and they were taking him to all these parties and like introducing him, and they kept promising to make him like, "We're gonna help you get famous." And then the one Beach Boy took one of his songs, then changed the lyrics and changed the title of it, and then didn't give him a credit, and then was like, "Oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll we'll, we'll get you in the studio." And they get him in the studio, and the guy's like, "I don't want to sign you, but uh, keep up the good work." So like I, I, think, I, I don't think I'll ever understand other than moving to the woods and starting a cult. I don't think I can understand <laughs> Charles Manson because uh, you his know, music wasn't that cult. bad. It, was, it really okay. wasn't. Yeah. So he's probably more of a uh, songwriter than than a musician. He's, he's better than Bob. Dylan. Dylan. He's better than Bob Dylan. The times yeah. they are changing, uh, man. <clears throat> I'll give him that yeah. terrible joke. <laughs> Which is funny yeah. because Bob Dylan is another person who openly says that he sold his soul to the devil. Yeah. You've seen that 60 Minutes fame. interview? Mm-hmm. There was another person, a country music singer, who was who was part of the 27 Club. And he was, I think, one, well, I'm going to say one of the first people to go on record. It happened years ago. Uh, to go on record saying he sold his soul to the devil one night on his farm, and that's how he learned how to play guitar. So I guess that's happened a couple of times. Well, I mean, yeah. supposedly, you know, that was his job um, when he was an angel was uh, music. He was the choir yeah. of heaven. Quote. The artist. Unquote. So. Freaking artists. They're always ruining things for everybody, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. So I heard a, an alternate theory to why the Civil War started. Pretty interesting. I I would love to hear your alternate theory as theory as to why the Civil War started, Dan. Well, I mean, we we have the big ones, you know, slavery, states' rights, all that stuff. But apparently, um, the United States in the 1850s they made these three uh, ships to carry everything. Um, there's like the West Coast, East Coast, or something like that, and then the SS Central America. And I guess the SS Central America was carrying like uh, thirty-three million dollars worth of gold at the time, which now is like like well up into the billions, like the upper hundred that's billion. Thirty-three million—that's that's probably a trillion dollars, dude. That's an insane it's, amount of money. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was um, it was sailing to new york and it got around the carolinas and it crashed off of our coast and now all of that gold got lost every bit of it and they couldn't find it and it led to the great recession of 1857 which a lot of people now you know if you think about all the other times we've had these big massive wars like world war ii was right after the great depression and world war one you had everything going on in uh, europe it kind of makes you wonder if like and they had everything else going on, but it seemed like they were trying to make compromises on everything. But as soon as all the money was gone and the North was broke, it kind of makes me wonder if that's kind of what pushed everything to the edge because every all the banks were shutting down. So the uh, the state's rights that uh, actually so on a I I have I have had an interesting relationship with faith. And I am currently working on the history of organized religions. And in the process of doing this research, I have come across the Southern Baptists. And the Southern Baptist, a, a, a prominent Southern, a rich, prominent Southern Baptist minister who was full tilt support by God. God has given us the divine right to be a slave owner. That guy is the one who came up with the lost cause theory, which is the state's right thing. And this dude in working on the curriculum for a Southern, like for Baptist schools had Robert E. Lee's 
uh, letters and he like clearly omitted half the letter and like removed almost all mention of the word slavery from it. And now oh, yeah. that was taught into schools in the South and it was taught in schools in the South for years. And it was in the South and next thing you know, it spread across. And now we have people like my uncle who's a complete nut job. He was like, well, you know, there's Northern aggression. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, well, well, fuck you. You're from Maryland. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> you that was part of the, uh, well, one of those states wasn't Delaware. Was it Delaware? It was actually uh, a slave state. Maryland. Maryland was one too. They didn't yeah. switch sides. Like everyone else did. But yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, that to me was one of the, of the research that I've done and I'll, I'll eventually share more information on that. Cause I'm, I am working on a few, a few different projects with that. Uh, that one, that one to me was the most interesting. So I always kind of wondered like, well, how do you, how do you come to that conclusion? And that's, that's how it came to that conclusion, how you can have misinformation, deliberate misinformation infiltrate an entire population. And, it's insane. Yeah, now, yeah it's, it's nuts. All because, you know, oh, we got to desegregate schools? Fuck no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just nuts Well, they, dude. they take forever to do anything and to change anything. Like, it's the same thing with the decriminalization of marijuana. It's like, people are doing it now on the streets, but there's still people locked up for it. And their excuse is like, well, we just, uh, that'd be a lot of paperwork for us to have to do. Doesn't matter. Fucking do it. It's your job. Yeah, I, I don't get it. I don't understand the whole hang up on it. I really don't. And I can understand like, okay, well, we were, we were fed a lot of propaganda when we yep. were younger. You know what I mean? They don't say like, it's still I, people like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess we're, I guess we're, we're close to the same age that like, do you remember like people would tell their parents after the dare program, like, Oh, my mom smokes the green stuff. <laughs> Like, ah, oh, go fuck yourself, dude. You know what I mean? It's the yeah. devil's lettuce. But that's that's a whole different subject right there. And hopefully North mm-hmm. Carolina is, is on the right side of history with that sooner rather than later, and they just legalize it. But, right. You know, you got to wait for somebody to be personally affected again. You know, one senator's wife liked it. Yeah, We're such a weird it. state, though. Like, we constantly have, like, a Republican Senate and then all of our executive branch will be Democrat, and then shit just gets pushed around and vetoed or thrown yeah. out or outvoted. And like, well, that's because the major population that really supports and sustains the state are Charlotte, New Mecklenburg, and Wake County. Yeah. And when you go outside of that, you go back like into Carteret County, like that's going to be red, and it's going to be red no matter what. Now Carteret County is a fraction of Wake County. Right. There's probably like more, one there's more people in this. There's more people in my town than there are in Newport and Moorhead combined. And I, well, I don't even live in that big of an area. It's it's growing. Like Carteret is like a hundred thousand, like pushing a hundred thousand now. But that's one tenth of Wake County. I look yeah, at nuts. stats and stuff a lot. We have, we have forty thousand people in Fuquay growing. Yeah, you know that's you know add in you know Havelock. I'm sure. Yeah, combine. Yeah, but it's, yeah, that's just how that red blue works. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, is like Wilmington is still hard red too. Like it's for a more liberal city, it's still extremely red. The whole East Coast is, but it's interesting it, it's, the way that works. But it always seems like we have a Republican state Senate and stuff like that, and then we have Democrats in the executive branch, and that's fine, I guess. It's just nothing seems to get done there's just this little cat fighting back and forth and then i learned like we're number one in business yeah we're number one in business but we're dead last 52 we're behind the territories when it comes to workers rights that is terrible and we can't even get weed (laughs) this would be such a good state for growing i know right (laughs) this would be such a good state for growing it it's funny because the other coast is completely blue and they got weed and they don't give a shit about nothing man and they got money. <laughs> and they got money. So, like, so California is like, I don't know, like the third largest economy in the world or something like that. Right. Something like that. 
Oh man, I was actually I was watching uh, I watched a documentary recently about how the uh, the doctors like the doctors were just writing people prescriptions and you're like, oh that guy said he fell off a skateboard. <laughs> 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 It was fantastic. Some of those guys, like they knew what they were doing, and I, mm-hmm. I, I would just, I would hate going to like the wrong doctor trying to get the right prescription. <laughs> so, yeah, but it looks like the, uh, you know, pot talk in North Carolina. It looks like the, um, the tribe, whatever the major tribe is on the west side of the state, is uh, opening up a like gigantic weed superstore. Well, I, I don't know anything about it beyond that. I don't know if it's something where if they if they've just like gone in full full tilt medical, like oh here's your medical card. You're I good. think that they passed medical. I'm not positive. It hadn't gone to an effect Ooh. yet. I'm not sure. <laughs> they they had one of the lower votes saying medical was cool, but then it stalled when it got to the Senate. And yeah. um that bill, that's such a it's it's not a good bill. Like I would like, boomers would gotta go, man. I'm sorry, but it's time. What are, they, go. what are they hanging on to, man? They are so old and they look so bad in the Senate. They're like it's wheeling cold. them in and they're it's summoning cold. them up. They're heating them up under a heat lamp. Dude, we had uh, what's it? McConnell froze, and then what was the Feinstein? Mm-hmm. She just went on a rant. She's like, all she had to do was say yes. She started ranting about something. It's nuts, dude. And then in North Carolina, we have. Uh, we have we have this lady named Virginia Fox. She's a uh, she's a she is a trumper through and through. And there's no way she's coming off. She's no there's just no way she's coming off the pot thing. She was raised to think that the devil grew pot. Um, and there's just no nothing we could do about changing her mind. So it's just you know until she dies is what we have to deal with. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I I just don't get it because you can have faith and still like. Not be an asshole. Yeah, right. right? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you can put the. It's something about that generation. It is. It is. I mean, well, it, it wasn't enough that they had. They were sent to college pretty much on a free ticket. They got cheap housing, good jobs, freaking all everything, pretty much the silver spoon generation. And then they made sure that we had absolutely nothing. Their own children made sure we had absolutely nothing. Well, you got to work hard to get it. Right? Right? Like, you can't increase the cost of living, increase the cost of food, and increase the housing market without increasing wages. I'm sorry. It doesn't work like that. You can't. And We should not have to choose between paying rent because we're all still pretty much renting. And yep. freaking eating food. That's not fair. Or having That's to do not. stuff like donating part of your body, you know? Don't you have bootstraps? Yeah. You can't use no, I don't. Long. Actually, I haven't worn a pair of boots in a long-ass time. I had to sell them on the some Cheerios. <laughs> no, man, we're going to eat them. Terrible. Like the Frontier. Dude, I wear Vans. Yeah. I wear Vans or I wear Merrill's. <laughs> Yeah. I, uh, vans, man. I uh, actually, I had a sign of the times, right? I handed my daughter a pair of vans at this new shoe store. And she's like, oh, these are cool. And she went away and got some cowgirl boots. So she's, uh, she's nice. not, into, not into the vans just yet. So I'll, I'll keep pushing it. She's into, she's into the reggae music that I listen to. It's only a matter right. of time. It's only a matter of time before that, that comes back. Do you ever go to the shoe department? You know, the cheap shoe stores? That are barely hanging on. They got guys like Gil from The Simpsons just trying to keep their job. Oh, old Gil's coming back, baby. <laughs> um, you ever go I to those have, places? That's like, that's like rack room shoes, I think. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. go there anymore. They, I can never find shoes that were. They have these. Feet. They have these loafers there that are like gold speckled and red speckled with these little pyramid shaped like metal spikes coming off of them. And they look—they look like pimp shoes, and I want to get those so bad. I want I know them exactly so bad. What you're about. I know, man. Clap them together. 
And my girlfriend is like, my girlfriend is just like, you can't buy them. And I'm just trying to get her son to buy a small version of them too, so we can have a matching pair. <laughs> the last time I went in there, they had a pair of Reeboks pumps, and I was like, dude, oh, you're really? just hitting my nostalgia button. Yeah, we, uh, dude, that's I came across some vegan shoots at uh, at the last shoe store we went to. I got a picture of it. I'll it to you. Vegan shoes. So I don't know if their shoes were eating. I don't know. I got the picture somewhere on my phone. I'll text it. I'll you got it them here. soy loafers on. He's a soy um, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you like my shoes? I guess it's yeah. so that, you know, I mean, <laughs> just in case times get any tougher, they can boil those damn shoes and eat them and not feel guilty. Yep. Yeah, well. I wonder if they were made from child labor or if that's like, <laughs> like this wasn't made in a sweatshop, so it's vegan. As long as it's child not made out of animal, they don't give a fuck, bro. Child farmers <laughs> and then child laborers. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> All right, so we'll get back to Gator Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Gator Man. Gator Man. So, uh, so I was inspired by John last week to look up some stuff, and like, so the way I was, the way I went about this, is I decided to type in uh, an animal plus man. I tried animal plus woman, but I kept just getting women getting attacked by like alligators and dogs. Uh, apparently, like you're not in the cryptid world, you're not allowed to be a, a, a like a girl version of any of it. Uh, so that was a little little fun fact for you, but uh, I decided to go with uh gator man and this is mostly because we've been talking about like um florida man over the last couple of weeks and right i did find some information on on gator man but before i get into that i do want to talk about the youtube gold that i found so there was the uh the song i sent you guys titled kiss my ass by gator man spelled m-a-i-n apparently this was a very popular song in Dallas back in the day and the song can only be described as an elegant mix of a fuck you to society and a ballad, a love ballad written about his Cadillac. And uh, if anyone wants to see that, I'll have the link in the show notes. So shout out to Gator Man. And then the second one was uh, a clip from season two, episode one of the show Atlanta with Donald Glover in it. Oh, it's a good show. Oh, dude, I, I, I had never actually watched it. I did watch this episode. Uh, the clip, so the clip is, uh, it's got Cat Williams, the Pimp Supreme in there, one of, one of my top five favorite comedians of all I time. I was actually watching Cat Williams clips right before we started doing this. Were you? I, I, dude, yeah. I watched, yep. uh, I watched his green suit special, and I, I cried. I was laughing so hard. I, I, I hadn't seen that one in, what, 15, 20 years now? It's been such a long yeah. time. That man is genuinely hilarious. And that was it's upsetting. Was it, it, it's it's really upsetting how like they let some people go right on through like through the gates of Hollywood, and they have held him down. And he's probably one of the funniest comedians of our time. You know what I'm saying? Well, he, I mean, he reached height. I, I think he had a drug problem or something, and he's kind of kind of brought him down a bit. Well, it's not just that. Like he exposes a lot of stuff too. Like he talked about what was going on behind the scenes with Dave Chappelle. Oh, and how, like, Dave Chappelle was trying to get out of that contract. Yeah, he's the one that was talking about how really, like, he just didn't want to be a part of that anymore. And they were trying to ruin Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle wanted to walk away. And so that's how they're like, before you even get to Africa, we're going to have the United States convinced that you're a drug addict and you're losing your mind. Just because he wanted to... He was mad because Comedy Central or whatever the parent company was made like five hundred million dollars off of him, and they only offered him ten percent of that, which fifty million dollars. I'm okay with that, but Chappelle did all that himself. I mean, that was all him. That was all of his production and everything. So for them to take that much of it, but Cat Williams was talking about that, and then all of a sudden, Cat Williams started having all these problems. But I, he probably had a drug problem too. Yeah, he was also he was also heavily into drugs. Yeah, that that kind of ruins things. But uh, it, it, the scene it's truly hilarious. Um, so what happens in the scene is like these cops knock on the door and Cat Williams comes in. Like apparently the, somebody called the cops about a domestic disturbance at just a nosy neighbor, and uh, the cops threaten like burst down the door. He's like, "If you come in here, I'm going to have to let my gator out of the bathroom." 
Yep. Uh, Gator. <laughs> it's just so matter of the fact. And like the people. I like the how the cream. cops are like, he doesn't have a gator in there. And the kids are just like, he do got a gator in there. That's the alligator man. <laughs> yeah, so that's the alligator man. Now, I, I, I will say in the event that somebody other than our friend group watches, like and listens to this, that that was not, it's not a pure comedy. There was, there's definitely some heavy shit in that, but they also, in that, in that same episode, they do have a Florida man scene. So if you get the chance to watch it, that's, that's pretty funny. Uh, great, great opening scene in that show. Uh, and Dan, if you get the chance, please watch it. I will. Now, just, just get back to the cryptid stories. So uh, with Gator Man, there are three major examples that I came across um, in doing my research for this, and three of them are found in the U.S. Uh, the first one is Jake the Alligator Man. Now, Jake is supposedly a miniature mummy that can only be described as a baby senator that happens to be a gator instead of a horse. Now, Jake is on display at Marsh's Free Museum in Long Beach, Washington. And now Marsh's, from what I saw on YouTube and just just the general research, uh, YouTube or Google search, rather, it seems like it's like one of the most perfect tourist traps that I've ever seen. It's like somebody in a movie. If you were to draw one, like a road trip scene in a movie, this is the place you would imagine. Uh, it's full of all kinds of weird taxidermy. It's got uh, a two-headed calf in it. It's also home to the world's largest chopsticks. Oh, wow. Now, it's pretty obvious that Jake the Alligator Man is just bad taxidermy. It's almost like someone on the internet had a bad dream and they just made it. But, you know, it will, it will haunt your dreams just because of how creepy it is. But if this thing were to attack you, you could easily fight it off with a swift kick to the chest. It's not very big at all. It's got little, oh, yeah. like, kid hands and it's like no just get away um now the actual monsters and these are like the real scary sons of bitches that that i came across so being seen in both new jersey and in south carolina i believe this south version, carolina i'm sorry i said i believe south, south carolina? carolina yeah that, i believe that, they have that there not, right um terrible so place is, oh sorry dry mouth there so the Gator Man is supposed is said to be between six and eight foot tall. It's got uh, three fingers, like four or five inch long claws. Its eyes glow red. And in some versions of the story, it's got a red chest. Now, the first mention, and this is, this is according to uh, uh, Cryptid Wiki. Uh, this was first reported by residents in New Jersey's Newton Lafayette area. And this is back mm -hmm. in 1973. There were uh, several people who reported seeing a large humanoid alligator. Now, the interesting detail in the New Jersey story that I could find is that a public official did make a statement about it. And that was in 1977. So it was four years after the initial reporting. A gentleman named Alfred Hallstruck reported that the state's southern tier was the apparent home of a scaled man-like creature which appears at dusk from the red algae infested waters to forge among the fern and moss covered uplands. Well, that's why it has a red chest. It's the ferns. If it's in red algae red waters. Algae. Yeah. I mean, it's just it covered. Sense, it just right? needs a bath. They need to bathe it's the gator man. Bioluminescent well, gator man sounds fucking You funny. know, anytime that you find red ferns and there's two red bone coon hounds buried there. Yes. Dude. <laughs> you bury the dog in the ferns. They're just so full of seeds. <laughs> do, do you guys remember Depressing. Swamp Thing? <laughs> Depressing uh, chia pets. <laughs> you, do you no, the, the book, The Red Fern Grows. We had to read it when we were kids. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that has nothing to do with Swamp Thing, unfortunately. It oh, would be man. a much better book if it did. That Dude, was that was the coolest joke. It got that too was much the, attention. That was the coolest oh, sorry, action figure. No, you're good. I was Swamp gonna say that was the fantastic. coolest. It was the coolest action figure I had as a kid, man. Like it glowed, it glowed in the dark, and then like he'd squeeze his legs and his arms would just kind of, they do like this. Oh, you had shake back and forth. Yeah, I like the movie. I don't remember much of it, but I do remember watching it and enjoying it. My uh, yeah. my favorite toy as a kid. So we we had there was there was two of them. I had a RoboCop that lost its arm. 
And oh, it was, dude. It was super, it just worked out, right? Like, okay, cool. It's, super, it's fucking Robocop with one arm now. Um, and then I had a uh, Johnny Storm Human Torch. And uh, you pulled you pulled a string. Or the, yeah, whatever, Human Torch. Pulled a string and it shot out real sparks. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, we almost put our eyes out with that thing. So. Dan and me had first generation Star Wars collectible toys that we broke into pieces and reassembled into other pieces. And yeah. uh, I mean, nowadays those things would have been worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars a piece. You know what I'm saying? But I don't give a yeah. shit, dude. Well, your kid, we right? made them awesome. We had a, uh, a yes, my brother. So my brother's into collecting, into collecting uh, old toys and shit right now. And uh, he's found a couple of things that we had that. You could, I mean, you have to be such a nerd to buy that and not play with it, right? Like that Johnny, the, the Human Torch one, that was, I think it was like 150 bucks. I think I got it for $9 or uh, something, something pretty cheap. But I just, I wish they made dangerous toys like that right now because I would definitely right. buy them and hide them. That would, they would be my closet right now. No questions asked. Just, you know, I've, unfortunately, like my son, son's a wild child. That kid will put out his eye. So be cautious what we have there. Um, but yeah, so this dude, I, now the government official saying something, I'm choosing to believe that he just let it slip. Like he was the wrong guy in the right meeting. And he's just like, okay, well, of course the governor's not going to say anything, but he is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give a point to some credibility point to that guy because um, I feel like I would have a hard time keeping my mouth shut or something like that. Do you um did you hear about or did you see the thing on the Mexican Congress with the aliens? I did see the thing on the Mexican Congress aliens. I didn't I didn't spend enough time watching it. Um, I did read an article and the article just really threw me off because it said that the uh, scientists at one of whatever Mexican Mexico University uh, performed radiocarbon dating to pull DNA out of the alien to prove it wasn't um, human. Which those are all words. None of they they shouldn't be put together like that. So it's maybe it was a <laughs> translation thing, but <laughs> like I mean, radiocarbon dating to find DNA. Like, that's not how you find DNA. You know that's how you date something. So, okay. Yeah, exactly. You can't radiocarbon date anything that's over 5,400 years old, period. So. I don't know enough to argue against you. So I'm just, I'm just going to take God that as right. a fact. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't understand it. Look, there's a whole bunch of short circuits and loose wires firing off in here. But <laughs> I know some shit. <laughs> Damn it, that one day in history class, I was sober. That was what we covered. Uh, um, yeah, and so it ahead. looked it, it's it looks promising. I would love I would love for somebody to finally uh, they, they have to exist, right? There has to be aliens somewhere. The universe is just too big for us to be a fluke, right? Somewhere there has to be something now. Is it possible for those aliens to be so far ahead of us that they could travel to Earth? That's pretty cool. I would love to see that. And uh, I just wish I wish that I wish that our government would go ahead and come forward and say something about it because it's I don't know. It's just but then on the other hand, like you look at like all the alien sightings and landings that supposedly happen. Like there's a lot in America. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. <laughs> they have an action. Oh no, they showed up. They showed up about three years ago. They wanted to see what we had going on. They landed on TikTok and they said, fuck this. And they got the hell out of here. <laughs> That's exactly how it went down. <laughs> they showed up. Uh, they watched the girls showing off their thighs. And <laughs> they said, no. We're not doing this, and they just left. They watched about yeah. 47 TikTok videos about Doja themselves Cat. in a row <laughs> and about how these guys had it all wrong, and they were just like, they don't even know what we're about. Let's just go. You know what I mean? 
This is wow. that one guy. Tim got it right. <laughs> he was ninety-seven percent close. Uh, they, they're like they're sitting there pulling people up to their spaceship, and they're all like, "Oh, you're not going to put anything in my butt, are you?" Like, come on, like guys, really? Please don't do that. Please. So, the anything South but Carolina, that. Um, the South Carolina story. I'm going to get into in just a second. Aliens are. It's a possibility. But like, there's a possibility it could be aliens because there was something definitely happened in South Carolina around 1988. So the South Carolina lizard man um, is around the uh, great or swamp, I think is the pronunciation of it. Did you um, say the great or swamp? I wish. <laughs> no, straight or like you're scraping some ore out of the ground. Oh. Which scrape ore, it's, you know, it's, it's not Grand Theft Auto, Dan. This is the real world. Well, you, I know some girls do down there from. The name is Ted Bundy. I knew some girls down there in South Carolina that are kind of how wish like straight ho, so like straight horse swamp. I just figured, like maybe <laughs> it's, it's, it's more believable than Swastika Mountain. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Have you seen that meme that's like the perfect road, uh, the perfect road trip doesn't exist, and it's like Pee Pee Ridge to Poo Poo Creek or something like that? <laughs> no, I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> real places too. Me. Yeah, I've uh, I have I haven't I haven't spent enough time looking at memes lately. I've been uh, I've been pretty deep in school right now. It's just not even paying off. I didn't do very well in my exams this week. I've also you know a guy in 1971 days. said memes were going to be the way of communication of like the next generation. He like absolutely I nailed that. it. I hundred percent believe that. When I was in high school, like when we were in computer class, we spent all the time going to worth1000.com, which all they were doing was taking Photoshop pictures and making little captions like that. Like that's kind of where it started to come from, where I noticed it. Well, he was the one that actually, I'm going to have to look this up. Because it's in a book, but he coined the phrase meme or coined the term, mm-hmm. but it was like something that explodes in pop culture that's passed around in conversation was like a, um, like a general definition that he gave to the word. And what then, was that? Hawkins, British evolutionary biologist. What was considered the first meme? It was that thing that was from World War II. Something was here or was there. What was the name? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, Killjoy. Or Kilroy. Killjoy. Kilroy. Killjoy, Killjoy was yeah. here. Kill choice. And then everybody could draw that spiky <laughs> S symbol. You know what I'm talking about? You drew the six lines yeah. and then you made an S. Everybody yeah. could do that. And nobody knew why we did it. We just did it. Yeah. Other kids did it, so we did it. So and then wait. Yeah. Dude, the kid the kids knowing shit network is still a, it still exists. Like um so before Barbie came out, I guess a couple years ago, my daughter first started riding the bus. She came home and started singing I'm a Barbie Girl. Now, that song has never been played. That song hasn't been played since it came out and it was a big hit. 2001, people, we just collectively decided that was enough for that song and no one's, it's, it's been erased yep. in the world until just recently. Yep. Kids know that song. She, she knew the Barney song. She knew the screwed up version of the Barney song. The, uh, but I can't even remember off the top of my head now. But yeah, kids I know what you're know talking about. Shit. It spreads, and there's no reason for it not to spread. So, like, some dude did that ass, and then he showed it, like, a, I don't know, 12 year old. And 12 is like, oh, sweet. And the network just spread organically across the world. But yeah, so. I think, I think me and John were responsible for owling. You remember owling, where you'd send people pictures of owls to scare the shit out of them? I th- I never got an owl picture from you guys. <laughs> no, nah, we just did it back and forth towards each other to scare the shit in our friend, like I like like our girlfriends or something like that. But like other people started doing that, and I was like, "Hey, that's we. That was me. I did that. That was you didn't. That's not you. I'm the one that Who's thinks owls are scary." You are. I kind of have a theory about that too. I feel like like whenever we're terrified of something. And, like, we share it. Other people who are terrified of that same thing identify with that, and then they share it. You know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah. And that's kind of, like, how that culture works. 
Well, there's some people that believe that, like when it comes to music, there's some people that believe that every song that's ever going to exist already exists and we're just pulling it out of the ethers. Like it just funnels into people's brains and then you just start making them That's right. It exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's like that the, a... that's my that's my music career all together right there in a nutshell. It exists and doesn't exist. Dude, I, I actually went back and watched some of the Trailer Globe Trotter videos not that long ago. Some Me of those too. Songs, that, that was a fun little. That was a fun little chapter in y'all's lives. But I was I, I, I enjoyed that. It's still um, kind of around. Now, well, thank you. Um. A thought that just popped in my head. Talking about guests, um, we should invite small act like lead singers onto our show. Find a band. I already know somebody perfect. They're, they're a regional band in Cleveland. You know what I mean? We should invite actually. I, I got. I got. Yeah, I know some people. Oh, well, well I've got some. Yeah. Okay. I still know that some people. That sounds like a good way to do that. That actually sounds right. like a good way to, to grow the show, too. Uh, their fans watch us. You know, our seven fans watch them. It's a good, you know. Do, do we get to seven? I don't think anybody <laughs> – I, I don't think anybody's watched this yet. I, I think, you know what I'm saying, like – Oh, um, we have 17 views, sir. And that's not all. 17? Holy yeah. shit. That's awesome. I'll watch that. Now, our uh, other one had uh, had two views. Now – I will say about the second one. I was one of those views. So and so is Dan. We'll see. Well, Tom, damn it, Dan. I'm I like I'm a one and done kind of guy. So you know what I'm saying? Like whether it's you know a performance or whether it's you know whatever it is, like one and done. I'm I'm not going to go back and watch these episodes because I was there in the moment. Like there's I was there moment. moment. I don't need yeah. to rot my brain with history. Yeah, that's why I'm still single. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. So I did, I did look some things up um, for the the show this week. I didn't just not do anything. <laughs> that's, that's Actually, I did too. I, I lied. Is I do cool, got something. It, is it cool if I go through this South Carolina version of it? Because this is mm-hmm. this is this is the yeah, best go. part of, of the lizard man stuff. So now there are you know in the research I saw like there were reports dating back to like the early seventies, so around the same time that the Jersey Gator Man was going on. Now South Carolina refers to this as the Lizard Man. Um, I, I guess I'm just assuming it's a more simple area than New Jersey, where they think gators are scary, and South Carolina they think lizards are scary, but. <laughs> on June 30th of 1988, 17-year-old Chris Davis had just finished up his night shift at the McDonald's when he got a flat tire. Now, mm-hmm. the kid got lucky. So as soon as he got done finished, or as soon as he finished changing his tire and he closed the trunk, something large came hurtling after him in the field adjacent to his car. Davis managed to get back into the car before the creature got there, but the thing proceeded to attack his car. It ripped his mirror, scratched the car, jumped on top of the car trying to get after him. Um, Davis, yeah, and, and what's cool about this, there's actual interviews of Davis and like the sheriff and stuff. Davis mm-hmm. said like after he got over the initial shock of a lizard man attacking him, he managed to get his car and drive and he just drove as fast as he could, swerving back and forth until the thing fell off his roof. <laughs> now, when he made it home, he, uh, yeah, it's the, the, this dude, this dude seems dead serious about this too. Like, this, the, the, the something happened to this guy. It's it, either that or he's one of the best actors I've ever seen because it was, it was pretty cool, uh, watching him talk about it. So, when he made it home, he woke his parents up. Uh, this all happened at like two o'clock in the morning. Uh, they called the cops, the sheriff got involved, and over the next couple of weeks, there were several reportings, uh, reported signs of the monster. And then, uh, yeah, it's, after a while, like, they start dying down, and then occasionally a story would pop up where it's like, oh, well, hey, a car got attacked or, like, pets went missing and stuff like that. Now, 
I got I got distracted. So anyway, so yeah, but yeah, what's cool about it, so you can see the interviews of the sheriff talking about it and how he's like, well, look, there's like 12, 13 people who saw it. There's a cat lady who uh who went out to her car, then like I guess her cat got attacked, but it looks like something like ripped off like chunks of her car and scratched it and all that stuff. It, it, my theory is that they uh, like one of the cats went underneath the car and something was trying to get at it. Now, yeah. this seemed to kind of die down. And then in 2008, something similar happened to another car. The car got completely tore up. And now they believe something was underneath of it. Something was running away from it. Now, the 2008 attack, it happened in Bishopville, South Carolina. And uh, this time, the creature looked behind some blood. Now, the sheriff's department supposedly took samples and sent them away. However, analysis was never performed on the blood. So they can't say why. South Carolina fuckery, man. There's who knows why. Maybe they did do it and they found out it was something weird. And they can't tell us because that's the way the government works. Now, that to me, like that, that's a candidate for like an alien story. Something reptilian. Mm. It was only, I mean, it was a short period of time. And so, I mean, some, some, something, I don't know. I don't know. I know you're, you were, you were muted for a second, John. I don't know if you heard what I was saying, but I, I heard the whole thing. I just, I didn't need it. I needed a minute. Yeah. No, you're good, dude. Yeah. Something happened to that kid. And this isn't one of those situations where like the Bladensboro beast where they're like, oh, no, it's good. They're, it's, it's done. Y'all, the hunters stopped showing up. You know what I mean? Like the sheriff was genuinely concerned, and the way he described it was uh, he had to do something because he was so moved by Chris Davis's um, account and seeing his car and everything that if he didn't do something and something happened, that he would have been run out of the state. So they they organized search parties and all that stuff. Like that, that dude, that sheriff was on top of it. So shout out to that guy. Um, yeah, but that's that's the information I have on the lizard man, and I I I'm not convinced it is a lizard man, but it's I think it's a cool story just because of the coincidence between something showing up in New Jersey around the same time, something showing up in uh, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other interesting things I found about New Jersey is occasionally gators do make their way up there, and the whole state freaks the fuck out. Uh, there is a uh, recently, really? I don't remember the date. Yeah. Like uh, someone saw like there was a gator on the loose and uh, the cops were hunting it down for a week. They finally, they finally caught it. I want to say it was recently. I don't think it was like this week, but it was within the last couple of months, I want to say. And uh, they looked, there's four or five stories just like that. I mean, uh, the, they found legitimate gators in the sewer systems in New York city. Like it had, yeah, that had to do with me. That had to do with people having pets, though. That was them flushing them down the toilet or, like, them throwing them outside and they crawled into the sewer because they could eat the rats because the rats are gigantic there, too. Yeah, they don't seem like migratory animals to me. Like, I definitely don't see a gator <laughs> moving up the well, coast. You know, in New Jersey, nonetheless. We have, well, the, we, we have gators on our coast. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. I lived on the coast oh, yeah. forever. I never saw a gator. Really? Much, yeah, never once. Yeah, I've seen them. And it was, I've seen them. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, granted, you know, I, I didn't realize we had chipmunks until one day I saw a chipmunk. <laughs> True story. I fed a baby snapping yeah. turtle to a gator. What? When what? Happened? When we were um, we were working on base, uh, building the fitness center, they had a retention pond in the back of it, and I found a baby snapping turtle. It was it was I mean it was pretty decent sized snapping turtle. It tried to bite bite at me. And I tossed it into the water because there was a gator in there. I, yeah. So, dude. Well, that was dark. <laughs> <laughs> kind of cool, though. All right. I mean, you I don't, know, I don't uh, like snapping turtles, man. Those things can no. just take your toes off at any point, and they sit it's down cool. in the mud, man. Like you could be in a swimming in a creek. I can't tell you how many times I was swimming in a creek, and I was just having the time of my life thinking that water is clear and great and all of a sudden someone's like hey there's snapping turtles in there and you see one and you realize that thing could take your fucking toes off you get the hell out of there as fast as you can plus i think i was swimming in dump yeah. water too probably got some kind of radiation poisoning 
It doesn't no, surprise don't get me. me wrong. I love derpy animals. I love salamanders. I love all kinds of... I love every kind of turtle except for snapping turtles. Like turtles just, are top tier animals, right? Like they they they've got to be on. Like if you were to list out your favorite animals, I think a lot of people would have them in their top fifteen. Turtles are pretty cool. Yeah, they're right. Cool, cool little monsters, you know. But snap turtles are dicks. Uh, oh yeah. Miles recently caught. Uh, yeah, Miles recently caught a caught a caught a baby snap. That big baby snapping turtle it wasn't too big, and doing that, people. But yeah, uh, I Freaking did a better uh, job taking the hook out of the snapping turtle's mouth than Miles did catching the snapping turtle because I still have all my <laughs> fingers. I'm very <laughs> proud of that. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, the snapping turtle lived a happy life, but so I assume I, I didn't. Man, we never it. took. We didn't. We never took the hooks out. We just. We would just like my mom and my dad would like cut the line and be like, uh, "Just count their losses there." <laughs> Uh, if, if it was bigger, I, there's no way. But I, I mean, we're Miles. Yeah, my son's fishing with like you know five pound test and a Paw Patrol fishing pole. You know what I mean? No. Like, this yeah. wasn't a very big fish or big gator. You know, uh, but that kid did catch. He did catch uh, one of the most amazing things I'd ever witnessed in my entire life. He caught six fish on six cast with the same worm. Just nice bluegill, bluegill. Uh, Pumpkin seed, bluegill. Like I was, yeah, I, I wanted him. I was, he convinced me to let him cast it one more time. And as a fisherman, I know how important that one last cast is. Mm. I let him get it. He crushed it. Absolutely crushed it. There's not seeing that kid work. Dude, um, I love catching bluegill, man. Bluegill put up such a big fight for such a t- tiny little fish. Like you'll think you were like pulling a bass bit. or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but so conspiracy, conspiracy theory, meeting, meeting sports. Uh, did y'all see Aaron Rodgers lose Achilles on the <laughs> first four plays of the season? <laughs> so, Aaron man, Rodgers is making his I drive think, and he's gone. And he's gone. That, I that think was he a did great it. internet. Did I think he did it on the, purpose. Uh, did you see the George Bush memes? Where they're like some of them. So Aaron Rodgers blew his neck, blew his Achilles. <laughs> oh, 9-11 jokes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. Like it, <laughs> it was like George Bush during the nine eleven thing, where he's in, like reading to those kids, and then it's like the guy. Yeah. Is that the one you're talking about where he goes and whispers at him? Yes. Yeah, that one's like great. Um, one of my favorite kids, my favorite conspiracy with that one is uh, someone said that this apparently Aaron Rodgers planned this out. Just so that when you Google Aaron Rodgers 9-11, something else pops up other than him ranting about 9-11. <laughs> so, nice. <laughs> so, oh, I laughed so hard when that guy said that. It was so amazing. Uh, well, guys, I'm going to step by and get, get a refill. Uh, who wants to go next with their with their their research? Oh, I guess I can go ahead. No, right, I'm listening. Just, just I'm just going to be away for a second. You're good. All right. So, I did some research into glitches in the Matrix. And uh, for everybody out there, if you don't know what that is, um, they think we live in a simulation and that the simulation's falling apart and we're having all these little glitches. And um, to that, I think it's pretty fucking stupid, mostly, you know. (laughs) That's that's what I got about it. Every bit of the things, the proof they tried to show that was a glitch in the Matrix was fake and stupid. Like, they're like, yeah, look at these birds. They're not flying. But it's just birds get stuck. Birds get stuck. And then people are saying birds aren't real. And it's like, I've squished a bird, man. Like, I know for a fact that birds are real. And also, like, everything can be explained. They explain in the videos that they're trying to say are the glitches in the Matrix or why they're not glitches in the Matrix. And I was like, this is a big fucking waste of time. I wasted, like, two and a half hours of my life looking up this stuff. But... I mean, the theory. I do kind of like, I, like when they were saying that nobody's ever seen a baby pigeon. I kind of was like, you know, they're, they're not wrong. I've never seen a baby pigeon. So I've never seen a crow's nest. That was one. I just heard this talked about on PKA today. Um, Mike Tyson's seen a baby pigeon. If Mike Tyson says they're real, I believe him. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't want to argue with that guy. No, the birds, <laughs> the birds he's one of the smartest men I've ever seen. That's a, you know what I'm saying. Like, 
Some if you just sit down and listen to him, he's so intelligent and he knows so much about. I mean, somebody that's definitely on my bucket list that I would love to meet one day and have a conversation with. I do have one thing that I did learn out of that that is proven by science, and it has blown my mind. Have you heard about the light observed test, Richard? It just like lights your waves, lights your, lights your waves, yeah, the, something like that. Yeah, so where they, they, I got stuck in like a 25 minute conversation with a guy at Staples about that. Um, it was one of the few times I wish I was more rude because <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really didn't want to be at Staples that long, man. I had to, <laughs> I get it. This is one of my inks, so, but yeah, go ahead. I wasn't listening to that guy. Tell me, tell me what's going on here, Dan. So they had, they were doing these light photon tests and they had two slits in this uh, board and they were shining photons, which is light pretty much for the layman's out there. Um, they were shining it through these holes and they were believed that every single time that it should uh, just go straight through there. And they like, I guess like they would have like this wave disruption in it and it would they noticed that when they had a detector there, it would change. Like the waves at first would be all over the place and do these weird patterns. But then once they had a monitor there, it would change and it would go to these straight beams that were going through the holes. And they couldn't explain. Like they, they realized that light changes the way that it reacts by whether something's w observing it or not. And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking this is like pseudoscience. And then I look it up myself and it's a real experiment and real scientists are backing this up. Like, yeah, we don't understand why this is happening. It, it alters depending on if it's being observed or not. So they think we have a multiverse going on at the same time where there's million, well, an infinite amount of versions of us and universes that don't even have us in them coexisting simultaneously. And they're working on trying to find a way to go back and forth through the different universes that exist at the same time, um, which I'm wondering if that's probably what's going on with uh, the whole Mandela effect as they started flipping those stupid switches in CERN back in 2008, and it just keeps on flipping us into different universes, and that's why things seem all weird and keep changing. I'm sorry. What? The, the oh. Mandela effect, CERN, flipping switches, bro. You, you okay. missed some backstory there. You got to fill me in on this stuff. Okay, so um, part of the way to try to, to go through these uh, multiverses would be to use um, wormholes. And they believe that like they can create them that are safe for humans to travel through, and they're working on that right now. And CERN is a particle, accel a simula uh, particle accelerator that okay. we use to try to find – we've tried to make black holes with it and wormholes and things like that. And I mean, CERN's been online since 2008, and if you keep up with the Mandela effect, that's about the time it started. So I'm just wondering if when they flip the – because like, it seems like CERN, they flip the switch every now and then, and then it breaks down. they got to work on it for some years, and then they start doing it again. And it's just, I got to start looking in to see if there's a correlation between the times they flip the switch and when certain Mandela effects have started popping up. So I'm wondering Mandela that's what's going on. Is an instance of false collective memories. Right. Okay. Or us flipping between universes and multi, or I should say multiverse. I think they call it multiverse when we're talking about this. I'm pretty sure you just described the CW's Flash, man. Oh, it's there's all kinds of shows. Um, sliders. Lightning went everywhere. <laughs> well, the Flash was based, is a comic book that's based on that, that type of science and technology. Like the Speed Force and like, I mean, they really did their research when they were creating that character. Yeah. So, I mean, the scientists all agree. The math checks out. There, There is going to be According to the math, which I mean, for hundreds of years, they had other things that we know now as science fact that they could prove mathematically. And they were saying the math sound, we just don't have the technology yet. Math I mean, they're shit. saying that there's going to be human like safe wormholes that we can travel through. 
The only problem is you can just kiss your family goodbye because if you travel through one, it might only be a split second for you, but it's going to be equal to like 100,000 years. So everybody that you've known and everybody that they've known and they're all dead and gone. Now you just don't know how it's going to work. I, the uh, a, a, a Scotty, there was a, there, in one of the Star Trek movies, Scotty made a joke. It was like, well, you, you ship one colonel's dog somewhere and the insides get all mixed up and next thing you know, you're sent to an ice planet. <laughs> like, Dude, I love Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, that that I don't think I don't think I'd I'd be cool. I don't think I'd be cool doing that, man. Being teleported somewhere. I'm not sure I would roll with that technology. I feel like I'd I'd, I'd rather stick to space station travel. We don't need technology, though. That's the whole thing, is we have all this technology now that are proving things that men with pen and paper figured out a hundred years ago. Well, that's like uh, the... You need the technology the thing, to do it, though, right? Well, what the John's saying, like, the original algorithm, was it for the Internet or for computers? I think it was the Internet. It was invented in 1829, the mathematical equation for... Maybe it was for making computers. 1829... It was just a mathematical formula like, yeah, in the future, this is going to be artificial intelligence and we're going to use it. It'll be a tool. And it happened by taking sand and gold and some glass and silicon and putting it together. How the fuck do they do this shit? Witchcraft. It's witches. <laughs> Think witch about it. Be a witch. Photography. <laughs> if photography, I'm not talking about digital. I'm talking about the original, like, you splash some chemicals on a certain type of paper, and it takes Silver a moment nitrate. in time. Exactly. Yeah. If that is not witchcraft, I don't know what is. The television. It's taking, it's taking something, it's like the, the camera, and it's turning it into a signal that's blasted in a bunch of zeros and ones that they've figured out a code for something, and then it's received, and it turns back into, like, like you know, when it comes to Revelation, when they're looking, like, into the future... Do you wonder if, like, some of the things that they're seeing, the visions, are just seeing tiny people in the televisions, <laughs> and the end of the world isn't even going to be that bad? I watched something interesting about some of the original televisions, how it was like a vacuum tube that yeah. had, um, that it showed, like, it would project the light spaces from the back of it, and then add in the dark places, and that's how you made the picture. It's crazy. It was like segments that went yeah. down the screen. And it was like three colors, I think. I think it was red, yellow, and green, or just something like that. That's the prime but, colors, right? Red, well, blue, and colors. Um, yeah, it, red, blue, and yellow are prime colors, but I think it's red, blue, and green. I might, might, I might have it backwards, but like light and color are different when it comes to primary colors. I learned that in drama class back when I wanted to be an actor. Hmm. The only thing you could learn in drama class is <laughs> just light and light primary colors. Dude, um, our hold on real quick. Our uh, me and John had the same teacher for drama class. That guy was nuts. He would have Vietnam flashbacks in the middle of the class, and he would like <laughs> he would up. sit he would sit <laughs> at his dude hmm? he would sit at his desk and he would only he'd mumble into his microphone. And when he realized people were falling asleep in his class, he would hold it up to the amplifier till it screeched with feedback. And good morning, Vietnam. Do you remember? Um, do you remember Jason and the Argonauts, the movie? Yeah, yeah, the story. Okay, right? there's a play called a uh, uh, Medea, and to punish us when we talking in class, he would turn it on, and it's literally just this woman screaming about how much she hates Jason from Jason the Argonauts being her baby daddy. That's literally what the whole play is about. I mean, She's just complaining the whole time about child support. Sure. But, but dude, yeah, he'd have, <laughs> he would be sitting there talking and he would just have a Vietnam flashback and then he'd turn on Pink Floyd in the middle of class and then that's it. Then we just had to take, he'd be like, take notes. <laughs> and that was it. Such a, such a fantastic <laughs> class, man. I don't have anything crazy like that. I did have a couple of lazy teachers though. Um, Man, just that's that's crazy, and that's your drama teacher. Yeah, that's how that that's how that guy decided to spend the rest of his life. That's amazing. <laughs> well, he kind of didn't have most of the choice in the matter. Vietnam really messed him up. Yeah, but you know, you still decided to go. Horrors of war. 
You know what I mean? Well, but I'm sorry. Did you say it was the a, wars of war. It was a terrible war. war. It was a terrible war, 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 but they were all zonked out of their mind on like mind bending drugs too. So, I mean, you got to take the good with the bad, I guess. Yeah, I, I've had some really weird interactions with um, with Vietnam era vets. Right. Um, yeah, that's it's one of those things where you, you know, when you're in the veteran community and you go to different veteran sites, some of those people show up, and uh, there've been a, f- a few of them have been pretty pretty cool, but some of them have legitimately been out there, and I, I, I bet you that has a lot to do with the uh, the drug choices of the time. So. Yes, good guys. Good guys. All right. So I've got something that's going to be really short, and I didn't do a lot of research into it because there's not much out there because I'm pretty sure whoever whoever did like wrote about it made it up straight up. It's okay. called the Flesh Gate. You know, like flesh, uh, flesh Gate. Flesh Gate, like G A I T, like. So you know how you got skinwalkers? Yeah. So this is the Flesh Gate. So instead of calling it a skinwalker, they called it Fleshgate. I've heard of this. <laughs> okay. I've heard of right? this. <laughs> so basically, it's a creature that it imitates your friends. Like, say you're out camping with your friends, right? And it's just slightly off in the woods. It'll imitate somebody that you know. Um, but it can only imitate somebody that it has already killed. Yeah. So it will wear their skin or their appearance to try to draw you out so that it can kill you, right? God, but it true. also has a second power, and mm-hmm. it's the power of gaslighting you. Yep. Because, <laughs> then mm-hmm. check this out. This is great. So it will imitate somebody that it has killed before, and it shows up in, like, say you're out there in the campsite with five people. All of a sudden, there's six people there. Mm-hmm. But it implants memories of itself in your mind. And so it gaslights in you, you into thinking that you've always known it. And then it tries to use its tactics to get you alone. So, yeah, you, I, it's me. It's your boy, Dovid, man. I've been your friend the entire time. <laughs> Dovid, that sounds, baby. That sounds like some evil dead nonsense, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> that, I think that's where they got it from. Like that's that's some of it. an evil spirit taking over. Like, well, she's not dead yet, but boy, is she there. <laughs> and probably making her almost as dead as possible. Uh, it's terrifying, dude. I couldn't imagine, like, you find out that your friend was possessed by an evil demon, and that whole time that evil demon, the evil demon was making you think you had pleasant memories with this person just so he could trick you into killing you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, my thing is, is I would have noticed it by the time we would have got back to the vehicle, because I'd have been like, "There's no way somebody rode bitch sweating up next to me the whole way out here to the woods," because I would have bitched about it the whole way here. There's no way there was five people in this vehicle on the trip here. I'm sorry, it's like I would have figured <laughs> it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> we have a two door Honda Civic. <laughs> right. I would. Seven of us I would have come out here. I would have figured it out, too, because I would have been like, I've got two friends in the world and a girlfriend, and I don't leave my house ever. How the fuck did I end up out in the woods? <laughs> I'm too old to be camping. This is nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> right? All of my stuff that I like is in my house. I don't need to be out here. <laughs> what if I'd be like, look, bro, I know you, you said that you're our friend and everything. But hey, I got an idea here. You wait here, and they're going to drop me off, and then we'll come back and get you. How about that? I swear we'll be right back, dude. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) We just got to hit the gas station up real quick. We need someone to watch the campsite. (laughs) (laughs) It's just walking out an centuries-old demon. You're going to leave me out here, bro? Like, for real? Come on, man. You're gonna That's leave why me like we that? definitely need a fourth person, so that way we got somebody we can leave back with the flesh gate. They're like, hey, we'll leave our friend here. We'll make sure we come back for you. Well, I'm the uh, I'm the odd man out in the situation, right? Dude, I wonder. <laughs> now you probably be driving, buddy. 
Yeah. I wonder if there's ever been somebody convinced that they actually, like, they had a flesh gate, but really was their friend and they left them out there in the wilderness. Left <laughs> the flesh gate home? <laughs> no, no, they left, they left the, they thought their friend was a flesh gate and they just left them out there in the wilderness by themselves. <laughs> yeah, it's on the internet now. It will happen. Guys, I swear, I got dropped off here last night. Yeah, that's a likely, that's exactly what a flesh gate would have said. You know what I mean? <laughs> just stuck <laughs> trying to hitchhike like, in a haunted woods. <laughs> well, I mean, the only thing that will work in his favor is the fact that I don't drink anymore. Because if I'd have been drinking, I'd be like, nah, bro. Nah, I don't remember you being here. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I wouldn't have. But I don't drink anymore, so I'm a little sharper than I used to be. <laughs> oh, man, we did it. Another episode. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> we, we crossed the finish line on this one, guys. <laughs> we should definitely get somebody that we don't know to come on here and then just gaslighting them into freaking believing that they've always known us. Oh, man. You know, you know what? Uh, we can, we can find a Bigfoot. We can find a Bigfoot enthusiast to do that too. Um, well, yeah. Apparently, there. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. All right, guys. <laughs> FL Signing off. Potentially the drunk asshole podcast, depending on what time decides later today. Later. Bye. Peace out. Uh, <laughs>